Hello, in this video, we're going to be looking at motor functions of the brain, part two. So let's not waste any of your time. Let's get right to it. Alright, as we talk about the uh, functions of the brain, one of the things we want to talk about right up front is a recognition of a reminder of what sensory and motor refer to. Sensory is the, the, the process of getting the information from the receptors and motor is sending the signal back uh, to the, the body, perspective body part that's going to do the action. Uh, now, and these happen in different areas. The motor is in the front half of the brain the sensory is in the back half um, and the way they're separated is that uh, somewhere along the side of your head there's a central uh, uh, groove I think it's a suckle not a suckle, succulus no that's not the right word either uh, let me look at it, I'm, I'm mispronouncing it sulcus, yeah I was going to say I knew what it was but I wasn't saying it sulcus, I'm sorry there's a central one and that separates the front and the back everything in front of that is pre-central uh, everything behind it is post-central so the pre-central is where the motor uh, occurs and the post-central is where the sensory uh, incurs All right, and so the motor again in the front, pre-central. So anything that uh, has to do with with moving something or you know movement of your body or your reaction to something, jumping, whatever, that all starts in the pre-central frontal lobe uh, area. Alright, now uh, this particular uh, screen is going to go hand in hand with the cranial nerves in the next video because it really showcases uh, what's happening, the different areas, the prefrontal cortex, uh, the somatosensory, the primary motor cortex, the motor association area, all that stuff. Uh, really a, a showcases that uh, anyway the motor stuff up front uh, the broca area the wernicke area and the sensory stuff uh, in the back uh, and again uh, for those that have an interest in really understanding uh, what the brain is doing and what sections uh, are do that that's a fascinating uh, a study Alright, so our next uh, topic, the Wernicke area, uh, when you talk about, if you're talking about cognition, uh, to be able to understand language and to, I mean, it's one thing to, to speak your native language that you grew up with, you heard it, okay, you had all your conversations with it, everybody, you know, that you're familiar with uh, speaks it, uh, then to learn a second language, man, it's challenging, it's like, oh, because it's in constant battle with what you already know, uh, and that's the that's the Wernicke area. Uh, and injury to that, as you can see, um, okay, an injury to that area would would limit you in those. But we're talking uh, spoken language. We're talking uh, creating uh, language speech that kind of stuff so that's the Wernicke area uh, learned rules of grammar would be in there uh, and of course uh, that's the the thinking part then the spoken word part that's going to be the the Broca's area so that information is to be passed over to the Broca area 
So and you can see that here in, in the front. So now we've gone from thinking about what we're going to say to actually saying it. And the broken area is responsible for moving of the mouth to generate speech um, in, in its entirety. Okay, so we, we've mentioned this kind of idea that sometimes the injuries of others, uh, which is unfortunate, has led to discovery of how things work and uh, what areas that they cover. And uh, the idea of having lesions on your brain, uh, which would limit uh, the capacity of working. So if you have non-fluent uh, aphasia or lesions on on your brain uh, you got a broca situation but you have lesions in that area then that's going to slow the speech uh, difficulty choosing words you can see using words that only approximate the correct word um, so that's you know you can think of uh, people that have unfortunately had a stroke that may be the case of what's going on or birth defects those kind of things. Okay, so continuing. Now the fluent, non-fluent was the Broca. Uh, fluent is the Wernicke. Um, injuries to this area. Okay, so now the speech's normal. It's gonna, uh, the speech is gonna be off. You're making up words. There's a funny scene in the magicians where if a person gets infected by a particular parasite, it just jumbles up their words. So they might take what you're gonna say and just mix the words up to where you're just saying gibberish things, uh, and those have to be uh, uh, taken out to be understood. But that's the Wernicke area, fluent aphasia. All right, uh, lesions and sleep. So not only will it mess up the speech or the or the process of pronouncing things properly, uh, but also your sleep patterns. Okay, you get a get a lesions in certain spots. It's going to mix up when you can go to sleep, when you want to go to sleep, how all, how long you sleep. Uh, and during that rapid eye movement, that early stage, when you're falling asleep, you know, the body kind of goes limp. Uh, basically, the muscles you stop trying to activate. Uh, everything kind of changes. Blood, you know, respiratory rates, the breathing in and out slows down. Everything's going to slow down. Uh, and But lesions in particular areas can affect uh, all of that. All right, cerebral lateralization. This is just the idea of uh, as we separate them in the, into halves, what the, what are they controlling? So, and this is the left brain, right brain concept that that, that I'm sure that you're familiar with. But left left brain people, uh, science, technology, math, uh, those kind of things, right brained uh, people. You know the artists, the musicians, the the painters, the uh, those kind of things as well. Plus some a lot of sight and sense and, and sounds. But that's the idea of right or left brain. On this next screen, you can look at a uh, a brain and then list all the things out there that it uh, may or may not, con or it may control. So you got your olfactory, your vibral memory, your speech, right hand, motor control, finish prize with the left hand. Uh, it's just on and on and on. So, but again, not a memorized list that we're going to have to reproduce. 
but if you do find it fascinating uh, there is the information well that's our video over functions part two the next time we get together we talk about the cranial nerves we'll see you then